Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn dependency injection by creating a simple application. So first we'll create the application and then we'll look at what the problems are and then we'll refactor the code. And then we're going to refactor our application by applying the dependency injection. So first let's look at our requirements. So these are not the general requirements. These are already been broken down into user stories. So we have two user stories to look at. As a user, I can see a list of all the books titles on the screen if I choose to do so, so that I can see what books are available in the library. Second user story is, as a user, I can see the detailed information of a particular book by providing a book's title so that I can see, I can know more about the book that I'm potentially interested in. So let's do some quick analysis. First, let's highlight all of the nouns. Okay, so we have user, we have book with titles, screen, and library. A uh, library is basically the system. User is, uh, we are gonna assume that user has already logged in and we're gonna assume there's only one user. Uh, so we're gonna forget about the user in libraries <clears throat> for now. And then we have detailed information and we have book. Uh, and then we're going to look at the actions, right? So see a list of all the books or book titles. If I choose to do so. Okay. And then in the second user story, there's see the detailed information of a particular book by providing a book's title. So if we do some analysis here, um, we have all of these nouns and uh, some of them are going to be uh, classes. Some of them are going to be attributes of classes. So basically we have these four nouns, right? We have book, title, screen, and detailed information. So it's very easy to see that the title and uh, the detailed information belongs to the book. And there's no attributes, right? So these are gonna be the properties or attributes uh, of a book, right? And there's no information about a screen. And then we look at the, uh, the verbs or the actions. So the actions are see a list of all the book titles. And then if I choose to do so, right? see detailed information about a book by providing a book title. So these actions will have to be assigned to the classes in ob object oriented design, right? So see a list of all the book titles. So this verb C seems to say that it's something to do with the user, but we are not modeling the user. So someone has to provide a list of books, right? So we can say um, that behavior should belong to the book, right? So got all the books, right? So then we're removing this. And then this action, if I choose to do so. So this also uh, from the user's perspective, but since we're not modeling the user, so then this behavior, this action has to be from, uh, has to be from screen. So the screen has to ask about, you know, ask the user um, whether or not you want to you know, see the uh, list of books, right? <clears throat> and then, the last one, see detailed information about a book by providing a book title. See detailed information about a book by providing a book title. So this is basically, again, from the user's per perspective, and this is basically uh, another action that needs to be perform performed by the book class, which is, uh, you know, to get uh, detailed info of a particular book by book title. 
All right, so we have done some very quick analysis, and we have two classes. We have book, and we have screen, and each one of them has their uh, properties and behaviors, right? So uh, we have this, I'm going to separate this. So we have book and screen. So uh, these are the attributes, and these are the, uh, the actions, the methods. So, and this is a method. <clears throat> So uh, let's go back and talk about the three-tier or N-tier uh, architecture. A good architecture would be this, uh, this kind of three-tier or N-tiered architecture, where not all of the business logic and all of the functionality is implemented within one block, one layer. Uh, it's implemented in different layers, and there's many benefits of this. Which I'm not going to go over go over um, <clears throat> today. So typically we would have three tiers at least, right? So we would have uh, UI layer, we would have uh, business logic layer, and we're gonna have data data access layer. The UI layer is is it provides a user interface to the user, so the user can interact with, and it handles all of the user actions. And pass that information to the business logic layer where all of the business rules are implemented and encapsulated <clears throat> and the data access layer basically it helps uh, the business logic layer to retrieve information and save information <clears throat> and update information delete information as well right <clears throat> so uh, we put all of that together we're gonna see a design like this. So this is a, a simple UML class diagram. So we have our UI, which is the screen object, right? It basically has two behaviors, two methods. The ask user to see all of the books. Second one is ask user to see the details of a book, right? And then we have our uh, book, and it is interesting, we have for three of them, right? So this, uh, we have our book business logic object or class. It's, it's actually a class in this case, in the diagram. Uh, it has the behaviors, get books behavior and get book by, met, uh, by title uh, method. And then we have our data access layer also has the same two methods. So, and then we have our book model, which has those two attributes, title and description, <clears throat> which is the detailed information. So why do we do this? Um, why do we, why don't we put the title and description inside the business logic, uh, the book business logic class? Uh, instead, we separate them out. Um, that's because because we're implementing the functionality in different tiers. Not only the business logic layer needs the title and description attributes, but the data access, data access layer also need to retrieve those information uh, and provide it to the business logic layer. So if we were to put the title and description attributes inside the business logic layer. And then, then we will end up with a circular reference because the book business logic class would use the book data access class. And the book data access class also uses the book business logic class. So that's a circular uh, reference that we are trying to avoid and the best way to avoid that is to have all of the <clears throat> attributes separated out in a model class which is a simple class that has nothing but a list of all of the properties of or attributes of that class that's why we have this separated out right so basically the ui uh, class uses the book business logic class where all of the business 
rules are encapsulated and then this class uses the book data access class to retrieve information and provide it all the way back back to the ui and that's why all of these three objects in this three different layers uses the model class okay so let's jump into video studio and start our implementation based on this uml class diagram all right so i have video studio 2019 here uh community edition and uh, i'm gonna create a new project and it's going to be a console application and i'm going to create a dunet framework console application and we call it library system Okay, so let's go back and look at our design. We have UI, we have book business logic layer, and we have, uh, sorry, book business logic class, and we have book data access class, and then we have a book models. So the UI layer, in this case, we're going to use a console, right? So the console itself is UI, and the console is, so this program and the main method is the entry point of this uh, console application. And this is basically the infrastructure of this uh, system. We are going to start with creating this uh, model class since it's a, a key piece of information that are shared between all of the objects. All right, so we're going to create that. Uh, I'm going to create a class. And then we can call it book. We'll make it a public class. And prop tab tab. Uh, we have the title, which is a string. And then we have uh, the detailed information, which is the description. It's also a string. So that's simple enough. We have the book up uh, uh, class created next we're going to create the book business logic class these are all supposed to be created in different class libraries but for illustrations easy illustration purpose uh, i'm going to just create all of them within the console application uh, project itself <clears throat> all right so um in I just uh, go back and cover a little bit in .NET. We can create class libraries, right, like this. So, right, so there's uh, different class libraries we can create. In this case, we can use this. Uh, we can also use .NET standard. <clears throat> so I'm not going to create the class libraries to contain all of the those, those different uh, layers. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to put them all together. So next, I'm going to create a book, uh, business logic class. Okay, so book, business, business logic. So, so we have the business logic. Uh, and here, we are going to make it public. And then we are going to have uh, two methods right and both of them return this book uh, object so first is called get books which is going to get all of the books right uh, so which is going to get all of the books so we're going to have a list of books right. for now i'm going to just uh, implement a return a book list uh, that has nothing in it and then this is a particular book right so i'm gonna say get book by title and uh so because we're getting book by title so we have to the user has to provide the title that's why for this method we have in one parameter that is title right and then we're also returning just uh, 
a simple empty book object just so that it doesn't complain and then next we're going to implement the data access object so we're going to call it book data access again we're going to make it a public class and we are going to have uh, uh, the same two methods okay and then we're going back and say uh, we're going to call these two we're going to have uh, have to because the book business logic layer is going to use the book uh, data access uh, class so we need to create a uh, object here so i'm going to say book data access right? so uh, data access okay. and then in this constructor uh, of this book, book business logic we're going to create an instance of this uh, class data access class then here we can just use this data access class to get all of the books and then here we're going to use the data access class to get a particular book and we're going to pass in the title so uh, because in this case our business rules so this is the business logic uh, class and it encapsulate all of the business rules but because in this case it's a very simple application and the business rules are pretty simple so there's no um, extra coding except that we are just directly calling the business data access the the, the data access layer right in some complicated uh, application in more complicated applications you can probably see a lot of uh, calculations uh, some other logic inside each one of those methods so, um, so next we are going to implement this we're going to actually mock this uh, for now and then we'll see whether we have time to actually implement the data access uh, to to get the data from database so for now I'm gonna mock this. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a um, books list, and then we're gonna just say, all right, and we're gonna return this books, and uh, what we are going to do here is. Um, we're going to have a list of uh, the books. So we have three books that are imagined books. Right? And then actually, uh, let's refactor this code a little bit. So we're going to have Oops. And then in our constructor, we are going to in our constructor, we're going to initialize uh, and initialize the books list. Right, so books equals this. And here we're gonna just return uh, the books and get book by title. So here we're gonna use uh, uh, okay, we already have the link namespace. So we can just say books dot. So we're gonna use link. Let's say um, uh, first or default where you know, the book, book's title 
equals the provided title, right? And then I'm gonna do a ignore case. So case in, insensitive compar comparison. So we're gonna have um, a book and we're gonna return this book. And if it can't find it, it will return now. So we're gonna, so what's, what, what happened here is we, we are using link query, right? We are using link query to get the, uh, to get the book by title, right? So the link query is going to kind of uh, see through all of this uh, book and find uh, the one book that has the same title as this title. Right. <clears throat> so that's, uh, okay, that's pretty good. And so we have implemented our business logic layer and our data access layer. Right. Now let's, uh, we have also implemented our book object, the book model class. And then now it's time to implement the, the user interface layer. Right. So the user interface in this case, like I said, it's just a console application. So because it's a console application, that's why it needs to ask questions. So ask user, see all the books. Do you want to see the details of the book? Right. So uh, <coughs> we don't want the user to exit the, the application unless the user actually chooses to do so. So actually, there are going to be three uh, methods, three actions for the UI class. So we're going to do a while loop. So we're going to have a variable here and say, actually, we're going to do a while loop. Right? So as long as it's true, which is always going to be true, we're going to hard code true here. So it's all going to do, it's going to do an infinite loop. So here we're going to ask a question. We're going to say, uh, I'm going to do console right line. And then we're going to say, what do you want to do? Okay. And then here we are going to read, read line. The red line returns a string, which is, you know, they call it command. Uh, but then we also want to provide some instructions here. Okay, so uh, type So now we uh, read, read the line, right? And then we, we're going to do a switch statement. You know, say command uh, case uh, case L. We're going to do something. And then, so here we can't say command dot starts with D, right? So this is not allowed. Uh, what, what we can do is to use um, uh, to use when, right? So we can say string str when command starts with d, right? So we can do this to achieve that. Okay, so then here we're going to perform some actions, uh, and then last one is if it's e. So in order to break out, we can just say return, right? And then default break. So let's test this, right? Let's say listing all books. Let's test this uh, without implementation. Mm. Get detail info. Of a book, and then here we're gonna say uh, here it's going to exit, and we are going to just test this console application, make sure it works. Some syntax error. Okay, need a comma here. All right, all right. So I'm tapping L and enter, listing all books. And what do you want to do again? So. I'm going to do D, 
So it get detailed info of a book. So that works. And then if I type E, it acts, it acts it. That's good. That's all we want to do. Um, only thing is, only thing I don't like is I think I need a, uh, a line here, empty line here, just so that it looks good. All right. So now we have to implement this. Right. So here we are going to say, um, actually here we're going to create that class of the business logic layer. Right. So we're going to say um, uh, where books equals new book that access. Sorry, business logic. Right. And then in here, we're going to provide uh, the list of all of the books. So we're going to get, get, get books. Right. So we have uh, this business logic. Right. And then we have all the books here. And uh, <coughs> we're gonna write them out, right? So we're gonna do a for each loop per book in books, and we're gonna print them out by using right line. But before that, I want to print all of the print the title here. So I'll say all oh, books and. Sunny colon and then I'm gonna say book dot actually I'm going to have uh, this and then I'm gonna create, use this and then and say book dot title okay and that's good and then here I want to get the detailed information of a particular book, and that has to be D, book title, right? So what I'm expecting the user to enter is D, and then the title of the book. Let's say you know, dependency injection, something like this, right? So for that, well, we need to sp split the, sp the, the string. So that, uh, we need to split the command, right? So we're going to say command split and uh, split by what? Split by the colon, right? And then it will return a, you can see, as you can see, it return a string array, right? So let's see, let's just call it parts for now. And then we know that the first part, we're not going to do validations here. We're going to assume the user always entered the right uh, value. So we're going to assume the second part is all, always going to be the title, right? So for that, we're going to have book equals uh, books business logic. Get book by title. Um, you know, assume the second part is always there. If it's not there, it's going to throw in an exception, right? Uh, actually, what we can do is uh, we can do a track catch. Right? And then uh, we're going to get the information. I'm just going to say, um, you know, say console.write. Please provide the command in correct format. D and then book title without the query braces. Right? And then and then it's going to loop and print a separate line. Okay, good. So 
we got the book in the case that the user entered it correctly. So we got the book and then we're gonna print um gonna print something. Gonna print so title uh book dot title and then we're gonna have line break actually we're just gonna do this and then and then the description book dot description yeah so that's good enough so we have implemented the UI layer and let's test it it's over here so first uh, I want to see all of the books. So I type in L and then it says all books. Uh, dependency injection, um, object oriented analysis, SP done at core, which is good. So, so now I ask you again, what do you want to do? So I want to see the detailed information about um, SP done at core. Right? So I and then I enter and it says title SP done core details details of SP done core. That's good. That's uh, that's exactly what I want to see. All right, and then it says again. So I want to see uh, details about dependency injection. Right? Then it gives me you know title, uh, dependency injection details, description details of dependency injection. So we can make this a little bit look a little bit better but uh, see the information is here right so we can just uh, we can create I think it needs a another line break here and then it would probably need some um, let's print some stars Okay, and perhaps another line break here as well. That way our UI will look slightly better. So I have L, then I'll have all of the books. And then what do you want to do? I want to see information about um, SP down core. Then I have title SP down core details information is details of SP down core. Right, uh, so that's pretty good. And then I enter E, and yeah, so this is case sensitive comparison. Okay, so that's uh, we have implemented this application. Uh, the only thing we didn't implement is uh, the data access layer, we are actually uh, not getting it from the database. So this implementation works, but do you see any problem with this? Right. There are actually a few problems with this. Right. So this business logic layer uses the data access layer, but it actually knows the concrete implementation of the functionality. Right. So we going back to the diagram, there is a dependency between the business logic layer and the data access layer. That dependency we cannot get rid of because the business logic layer actually uses the data access layer, right? So dependency injection is not about getting rid of the dependency. It's, it's not possible because we are relying on uh, the functionality. The business logic layer is dependent on the functionality of the data access layer. That dependency cannot be removed, right? So, <clears throat> By having this type of uh, implementation, business logic layer and the data access layer are tightly coupled. And that has several problems, right? So first of all, we can have two different teams work on two layers. Right? Uh, we cannot do that. The same problem with, with here. Uh, we cannot have a UI team work on the UI layer and business logic team was so we cannot have the three separate teams and implement them in parallel. 
right? Another problem is uh, maintainability and uh, extendability, right? So we go back to our code. Because the fact that we are using uh, the book data access layer, data access object directly here. So the, the book business logic class is uh, dependent on the implementation of the uh, book data access class. So this class, if we, let's say we want to change the name, right? so we don't want to call it book data access. Uh, we just want to call it book and use different namespaces to, to distinguish the differences. Then it means that we have to come back to our business logic layer and make change accordingly. Right? So this is a maintainability problem. Uh, another example would be if originally the data, the, the books are stored in file system, then the data access layer here is actually going to um, you know, open up the files and read the files from a, a local file system. But then eventually the data is stored in a SQL database. So what do we have to do? We can come over here and get rid of all of the code and rewrite it. Right, that's one option. Or we can implement another uh, class, call it different names, and then implement getting data from the SQL database. But by doing so, we have to come back and change our code here. The second option is actually slightly better than the first one because what if eventually they want to switch back to file system? So we don't want to actually rewrite the uh, data access layer. We want to create another implementation of the data access layer. So if we we have to do that, we have to use different class name. And by doing so, we have to come back and change the data access layer. So that extendability is, is also um, not good with this approach. So then how do we solve this problem? So there's this principle, which is the uh, the higher level object should not be dependent on lower level object. And both have to be dependent on abstraction. So then what is the abstraction? An abstraction is basically the definition of the functionality. So in our case, <coughs> right? So the business logic layer is dependent on the data access layer to retrieve books or retrieve a particular book by title. So the, the concept of these two functionalities are an abstraction. And in C Sharp, to implement abstraction, the easiest way is to use interface. Right? So the interface represents a, a abstraction of the functionality that the business logic layer is dependent on. So let's go to our Visual Studio and implement a user interface that provides these functionalities. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to implement again the user interface should be in a different class library but for uh, ease of illustration I'm going to create the um, uh, user interfaces in the same project. So I'm going to call it um, um, just going to call it book data access. Right. And for the book data access, we have these two, uh, we have these two method. Right. So interface, we don't need the uh, public keyword here. We just need to provide the signature of the method. <clears throat> we don't need to have any implementations because remember these are the abstraction. It basically says whoever implement this interface will have to provide these two functionalities. Uh, or or uh, put it to put it another way, we'll have to implement these two methods, right? Uh, with exactly the same signature and return type. So 
And then we change our data access layer. We can say that here, uh, the our book data access class implements the iBook um, iBook data access interface, which we did. We we already did. Uh, so by doing so, we are telling our business logic layer, right? So this is the data access layer. So the data access layer implemented a, a interface, right? So by doing so, the data access layer actually tells the business logic layer that I am implementing these two functionalities, right? These functionalities. And uh, going back to the business logic layer, uh, if we because we don't want to depend on the concrete implementation of those two functionalities, of, the, of that uh, abstraction of that two functionalities, right? So instead of depending on the concrete class, we can just depend on the uh, the book iBook data access interface, right? And then it will just work, right? So by doing so, the business logic layer is having a contract with the data access layer. Right, so the the business logic layer, it says to the access layer that um, you have to implement these abstractions, right? These functionalities, because if you don't, I would fail to do my job. Right? So, so we did this, and then here we would similarly have to implement a um, interface for business logic layer, right? So we're gonna create another I'm gonna say iBook business logic. And it basically has the same two methods. It could have more, it could have different uh, abstractions. Um, that's why we're not going to reuse this interface. Right? So, and then we go to our UI layer, which is the console application. And then here, I'm going to say, you know, I book business logic. Uh, that's right. It's uh, complaining that because I'm not implementing the this interface. Right. So that if we go that it's, it stops complaining and this will not actually uh this this would still work right so if i do l it's going to return this if i do d um asp.net core it gives me the detailed preparation if i do e it exit uh exit so now we use interface to um help us with uh loose coupling but if we actually look closely we can see we're actually still dependent we're still dependent on the concrete implementation we're, we're using our concrete class here so how do we solve this problem this is where our dependency injection pattern comes into play all of the work we have done so far are not about dependency injection in order for the business logic layer so which is the higher level object to be dependent on the functionality of the lower level object without the concrete implementation someone else has to create the class for it someone else has to provide the concrete implementation of the lower object lower level object and that's what we call dependency injection it literally means we're injecting the dependent object into the higher level object so one of the ways to implement it uh, the dependency injection is to use constructor dependency injection so in here uh, let's change this uh, slightly differently so instead of uh, book da we change it to underscore book and in here, we're going to have iBook data access. And then here, right? And uh, we're going to say book 
da equals book da. So did I have, okay, I forgot to uh, do this. And I forgot to do this. All right, going back to business logic and then uh, stops complaining. And so who's gonna provide that? Uh, it has to be the infrastructure. The infrastructure needs to provide a dependency to the implementations. Okay, so here we're trying to initialize the the, the uh, business object, the, the business logic layer, without providing that. So it's it's complaining, right? So, so we can simply do um, something like new um, book data access. We can simply do this. The control of creating the business data access. The control of creating this concrete implementation, the instance of this uh, book data access class, is inverted into the infrastructure. Right. So this is also called the inversion of control. Right. So instead of creating this instance of the uh, class inside the business logic layer, we're creating that inside the infrastructure, which is the main method. So basically the infrastructure, the main method, actually injects the instance into the business logic layer, the higher level object, right? So we're injecting the instance of the lower level object into the instance of the higher level object. So that's called dependency injection. Right? And if we run it, it's going to still work. So L, all of the books, and then if I do D, uh, SP done at four, I see the details of the book. I put E, exits. Okay, so let's review this. So now if you look at our book business logic <coughs> class, right inside the class, we have no dependence on the book data access class. Right, we only have a dependency on the abstraction of the book data access class, which is the interface that the book data access class implements. Right? So therefore, we are following the principle of both higher level object and lower level objects are dependent on abstraction, which is a contract between the higher level objects and lower level object contract of what kind of functionality that the lower level provides and what kind of functionality the higher level object depend on and because this case is a console application uh, that's why we are you know as developer we have to write this code but usually a more comprehensive framework or infrastructure in this case, I call it infrastructure. Um, it has the functionality of uh, dependency injection itself, right? So you're gonna only thing you need to do is to register the uh, the interface and uh, the concrete implementations of all of the classes that you you use, and then when you require to create a class. The infrastructure actually create the classes for you and resolve the uh, the references where we define in the in the constructor right so in this case we're saying that this class is dependent on a class that that implements this uh, interface and then <clears throat> we are registering in the infrastructure that uh, the book data access class implements the ibook data access class therefore when the book business logic class requires uh, the concrete implementation of the ibook data access interface it knows which object it needs to create 
Binding, so the business logic layer and the data access layer are loosely coupled now, right? So we can have different teams to work on the different layers, right? As soon as we have the diagrams, we know the contract, right? We know the interfaces that we, we're going to create. So you can have one team work on the business logic layer. You can have one team work on the data access layer. Um, uh, we know the interface is here as well, so we can have another team work on the UI layer if we choose to do so. Um, and then it comes to the benefit of uh, maintainability and extendability, right? So if we were to create, a, a, like you to use the same example, uh, if the uh, the data access layer originally um, have, uh, let's say we have this mock class, right? Uh, we can have a mock class and we call it book data access mock, right? Uh, and then we can have another one that we can call it book data access file, right? Which retrieves information from file system. And later, if we have all of the data in the database, then in the SQL database, then we can have book data access SQL. And just for argument sake, that if we change it to DB2, then we can have another class. They call it book data access DB2, right? So, and the only thing we need to do is in the infrastructure, right? We don't need to change the business logic layer. We don't need to change anything except the, the infrastructure uh, where we register this, okay? So we only need to change this one line to say, um, I'm planning to use the book data access uh, mock here for testing, right? Or I'm planning to use the book data access file here to retrieve information from file system. Or book data access SQL to retrieve information from uh, SQL server and so on and so forth. Right, so that's um, extendability. Right, or if you want to change the class name to book, so you can call it new book, right, from a namespace, then you can do so without going to the business log logic layer and mess it up here. Next, I want to talk about lifetime management. So, along with dependency injection, there's always a concept of lifetime management. So, lifetime of what? It's referring to the lifetime. Of the dependent object, right? Suppose that we are, so we're gonna reverse all of these codes back to the original, right? So you can see that we are dependent on, suppose we are using this, so we can see that this dependent object uh, has a same lifespan of this business logic uh, class, right? So a, basically, this business logic class uh, it manages both creating the instance of the data access object. It also manages the lifetime, the lifespan. As soon as the uh, the business logic object disposes the dependent objects are also disposed. So if we were to roll back, right? So we were to use this uh, where dependency injection is, uh, is applied, then that lifetime span is changed. It suddenly changed to, to be the same lifespan of this infrastructure, of the main method, right? Because we are creating it right here. Uh, we can create many times like this, but this is going to be uh, the same lifespan of the main method. Okay? So that's because we are not uh, managing the lifespan of the created objects on purpose. We're just letting it go in, uh, in whatever we want. Right? So we can actually implement uh, lifetime management and uh, we can implement singleton which means whenever you want to ask for a object, it's always there. It's always the same object. It's always the same instance, right? Or we can implement transient. So transient means 
um, usually transit means that whenever you ask for an object, I'm gonna create a new object for you, right? And basically, you you manage your own. We, we don't care about the the lifespan of that. It just disposes by itself, right? <clears throat> and there's things in between between the singleton and transit, right? and and uh, there's different implementations and different interpretations of the the lifespan management that that really are dependent on the implementation of the lifespan management. So that's uh, the lifespan management piece. So another thing is uh, is about containers. We, so containers is just something that helps to implement dependency injection. Right. So containers usually implement three different functionalities. It helps to register the mapping between the interface and the concrete implementation of that interface. Right. That class. And the second responsibility of a container is to uh, to create or to resolve dependencies right to create objects and re re resolve dependencies the third res uh, functionality of container is to dispose right to manage the the lifespan of uh, the created objects right so let's implement a simple container uh, to register the, the mapping as well as uh, creating objects. So let's go over here and uh, create a container. Let's just call it container. Right? And let's make it public as well. So first of all, we need a, um, a data structure that stores that mapping. And uh, one of the best one is, uh, is a hash table. And this must be, and there are different, right? So, then registration. Restrictions, right? So this data structure stores that mapping. And uh, we need the, contain, the, the constructor to initialize this registration uh, variable, which is hash table. And then uh, let's implement simply only implement the um, the transient the transient one. Right? So we register transient mapping, uh, which you know we're gonna have uh, interface and uh, the type of the interface as well as the type of the implementation. Right? So we're using generic here. And then what we need to do is we just simply add the type of T interface and the type of T implementation right here. And then we have the create. Um, we need to implement the create uh, method, right? So basically it creates a uh, it creates implementation to the interface. So basically, so then it returns the, the interface. Right? Uh, we're not implementing resolve. So we're not going to go into the constructors and resolve. We're simply implementing a, we're simply implementing a, a simple um, create method. Right, so having some issues here. T interface. Okay. So <clears throat> what we need to do here is to go to go into the registrations and find the type. Right? So we have registrations. And because it's hash table, we can use this. And the key um, is a type of of what? Of the T interface. Right, so it returns the type of uh, of implementation. Right, and if the type of implementation is no, uh, so basically if it doesn't exist in the hash table, then we're gonna throw in the exception. Um, the application exception. We're gonna say you know. 
failed to resolve name of uh, the T interface. Okay, and otherwise we we just simply return. Uh, actually, we're going to create it, right? We're going to create an instance of uh, of of this uh, of this type. And to do that, we we need to use Donut Reflection. Uh, I'm going to say Activator. Right? Activate what? Activate create instance instance of. We can provide a type, and that type is we already have it. It's this one. And. Uh, And then it's complaining about something. Is I cannot convert object to type. Uh, that's because uh, I know. Do this, and then it complains about something else. It says uh, cannot implement it. convert object to. Okay, so we need to also force this conversion to the interface because we already checked. Uh, now here, so it's safe to to do that for us uh, to force the conversion. So yeah, so basically it's this simple, and hopefully it works. So so if we look at this, basically we first we need to uh, instantiate the container, and then uh, we register the mapping between the interface and the limitation class. And then at the place that we need to uh, get the instance of that implementation, um, then we call the create method. So this helps uh, us to do dependency injection. So we're going to uh, here, uh, for example, we need this to be created. Right? So first we instantiate the container. Uh, container. Right? container and then the container we can register a transient so basically means every time we ask for it it will create a new object for you uh, and then okay so interface is ibook data access and the concrete implementation class is book data access so when I call this um, the mapping goes into the hash table Right. So here, instead of using the new method, I can simply just call container. Right. Container uh, create. And what I want is a uh, yeah. What I want is a object that implemented the iBook data access. Right. The developer has already registered the uh, the implementation. Right. If we were to use uh, SQL Server, then we would create another instance. Or sorry, we're going to create another implementation of this interface, and we would we would provide book data access SQL here instead of providing this uh, mock implementation. All right. So um, and this should work. Let's see. All right. So we have it here, and then if I do owl. So it still does everything that, uh, that it used to do. So our simple container works. Right? E exit. So if we were to ask for something that we didn't register, right? So if we were to do this, um, and then we run it, we would uh, see a exception that we throw. Right, so application uh, application exception. This is exactly the exception that we throw. Right, fail to resolve T interface. Um, fail to resolve T interface. Okay, so here we need to change the code. So this doesn't work. Uh, so we have to change it to something else. Okay, so we have this type of uh, the T interface. So yeah, so we're gonna basically say type of this, and then we can use type name. This should work. And we run it again. 
we should see fail to resolve I book did access, right? So it reports that error. All right, so here's a, so here we implemented the, the simple container. Um, and uh, just to illustrate uh, the concept of container, so uh, although we haven't implemented the, the actual resolving the mapping, but I hope that I have um, illustrated the, the purpose of the container and the concept of the container as well. Okay, so that's everything I want to cover for dependency injection in this video. Uh, I hope it helps. If you like my video tutorials, uh, please give it a like and subscribe, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.